What's up guys, Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about toga. Uh, we're gonna talk, honestly, some things that um, are not good about it. Toga, for the most part, as you well know, take off, go around, uh, very much is um, a useful setting of our thrust, not only because it gives us takeoff and go around thrust, but also what it does with the flight director indications, what it does with the McDo, which we're gonna get into. But there's some times where really it kind of plays against you. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So the first thing I wanna share with you is, and let me get in front of the desk so I can pull the whiteboard out. Um, toga, and we're, this is mainly in the 320 I'm talking about here, just so you know. Uh, you do not have auto thrust really working for you um, when you're in the toga uh, selection of the thrust levers. And that is because the active, if this is the profile view and your thrust levers are up here, this will say is toga, and this back here is idle. Uh, the active range for the thrust levers, two engines, is just above idle up to and including the climb detent. Once we're up here in toga and even over here in flex, we don't have auto thrust capability, which is, uh, and what I mean capability, what I really mean is we don't have uh, the thrust levers in the active range of auto thrust. It's not going to vary the thrust for us. Now that's relevant because when we do say a wind shear escape maneuver, or if we do a GPWS escape maneuver, um, or even if we do say a go around or on takeoff, when we pitch and leave the thrust levers in toga without moving them back to the climb detent, there's a possibility of overspeed. A lot of times we see overspeeds after the wind shear uh, recovery. And again, that's because remember when you place the thrust levers in toga, the FMA always reads man toga and the man is short for manual, which basically means manual thrust. So the first thing is that the toga position of the thrust levers is entirely a manual position and the auto thrust has no authority there. And therefore it is entirely up to you to make sure you're not overspeeding. Now the other thing is we get what's referred to as uh, SRS, speed reference system. I'm gonna hit on that in just a second. But really what I wanna to talk to you about is the fact that the go around phase does not respect altitude constraints. And so you'll notice here in the McDo, but the directly behind me, uh, as I flip through the phases, there's eight phases to the McDo. That's a whole video in and of itself. Here's the takeoff, here's the climb, the cruise. And if you read the top, that's where I'm seeing that. The descent, um, the approach phase, and finally the go around phase. When the McDo, or the FMS is in this go around phase, altitude constraints in your flight plan page are not uh, honored. And a great example of this is say Seattle, landing runway 16 center. You can see here in the flight plan page, the missed approach has us proceed to Tebney and cross it at or below 2000 feet. And then we continue up to 5000 feet for the hold thereafter. If you were to not select 2000 on your FCU, uh, the, the aircraft in the go-around phase would not honor that 2,000 foot altitude constraint and it will go straight to whatever altitude is in the FCU, which is why you got to pay particular attention to your missed approach and make sure there isn't some kind of step altitude. When you look at your missed approach procedure, if there is indeed first cross this point at or below say 2,000 and then later proceed to 5,000, make sure you put the lower one first because in this go-around phase, it's not even looking at your flight plan page to honor these constraints. Let's pull out the whiteboard again. I know I'm kind of back and forth, but <clears throat> I think visually here I can draw it best to, to get the point across. Um, SRS mode, it stands for speed reference system. And speed reference system, ultimately, uh, if you want to really get into the details of what it's pitching for, it's V2 to about V2 plus 10 or V app to V app plus 10. But really what that translates into is approximately 15 degrees nose up. That's in a nutshell, roughly what SRS is gonna give us. Now, let's say you had a V1 cut, and I'm only bringing this up because this was a recent scenario that I saw in a sim where we had the V1 cut, we got to the acceleration altitude, which is essentially where we push to level off. And as we level and fly this level segment, now uh, we're speeding up so we can clean up. Well, if you're not happy with the rate of acceleration here, uh, you could have a crew member, as I saw in the sim, go to toga to get a little extra power to ultimately get that airspeed trending a little more aggressively. But the issue is, as long as you have the flaps extended and you hit the toga detent, then you're gonna send the aircraft into a climb in SRS mode. 
speed reference system. So the go around phase is activated anytime we go toga with flaps at one or greater. Uh, you got to have the flaps extended at least one or greater to get SRS. And of course, if you just took off and you have the flaps extended and you push to level off and then later on went to toga, now you're going to command SRS, which is going to be disruptive to your level off segment here. So uh, that can quickly be corrected again by pushing to level off, right, for a second time. But you have to know what you're doing and be quick on the controls. Now, if you were still climbing, let's say you're still climbing and you're not liking your climb performance, then yeah, you could go from a flex to a toga position in the climb and you're not at that point necessarily going to get SRS uh, because you're, all, you're not going to reactivate SRS, I should say, because you're already in SRS, right, uh, as it read on the takeoff. So, you know, something to consider certainly is the fact that um, you don't have the auto thrust capability when you're up there. It's, it's not going to have variable uh, thrust for you. You also have the SRS activation and it's not going to honor altitude constraints. And, you know, when we, when we do go arounds as a whole, I will share with you, um, a lot of times the go around phase seems to, uh, not all the time, but sometimes it goes a little haywire. A lot of times uh, go arounds are a bit of a cluster. And a lot of that is due to the fact that we don't do them a lot, but it's also a mindset thing in that the crew wasn't expecting a go around. And so there's some element of a surprise factor. So I would, I would encourage you to shift your mindset on the approach into one of uh, that every approach is gonna terminate in a go around. And if you get down to flare height and you can't figure out any reason to go around, then just flare and land the airplane. But having that expectation to always um, be positioned for a go around mentally is gonna help you to ensure that it's not a cluster and you're actually on it with your call outs and your protocols and your procedures and calling out all the FMA, getting the flaps retracted, positive rate, getting the gear moving in an upward direction, all these things, right? So hopefully this makes sense and the video finds you well very much. Wish you and your family a happy holiday season. We got plenty of holiday deals going on, by the way, not only on the video portion of the site, onestepprep.com, but also at the 142 FAA approved academy, onestepprepacademy.com, all right? Can't wait to see you here. I'll see you in another video.